Welcome to the world of the kumquat. You are certainly in for a treat, a very sweet but sour treat. So join me as we explore kumquat tree care, types of varieties that exist, how to get your kumquat tree ready for the growing season, and ways to use the fruit. All right, let's get to it. If you've never seen or tasted a kumquat before, the first thing that you should know is that it is a citrus fruit that you eat whole. Yes, that means including the skin. Like many of you, my first introduction to a kumquat was actually in a grocery store. I remember seeing them several years ago and I thought, what's up with these tiny oranges and how on earth am I going to peel them? Luckily, the skin is very much edible, which tastes quite sweet depending on the variety. I was doing a little research into their taxonomy and I found many sources putting them in the genus Fortunella, which was named after botanist Robert Fortune. Unfortunella for him, that's old news, and kumquats have since been classified into the citrus genus. Spring is a great time to begin your search for a kumquat tree because many nurseries get their biggest shipments of fruiting trees then. I searched for quite some time going from nursery to nursery with no luck and I had basically given up on finding one. And you might ask, well why not try to buy it online? Because you know, you can buy anything online. But not so fast with citrus. Hmm, hmm, let's see here, this all looks like good stuff here, oh can fruit the first year, wait what? It's all fun and games until you look at the details and you realize you live in a citrus quarantine zone. If you're in the United States, citrus trees are a highly controlled crop done to limit the spread of infectious diseases. The main disease I think that they're worried about is something called citrus greening. It's a bacterial disease that is transferred through the Asian citrus psyllid, ultimately causing general decline and eventual death. And the worst part about this whole thing is that there is no cure for it. So for my situation, importing citrus not grown in my state is prohibited, so many online options weren't possible for me either. And then, there it was. A Meiwa kumquat tree. And I found it at Lowe's. I like to buy my plants from local nurseries first, but big box stores like Lowe's might have a wider range of citrus suppliers as it happened in my case. I got my first kumquat variety, I think, in 2017. At the time I was renting, so I was specifically looking for an easy-to-grow fruiting tree that would still produce fruit in a container. I wasn't obsessively documenting my plants as much as I do now, so I don't have the best photos of it, but I think you get the idea. As you can see, it wasn't a very large plant, but that was perfect because I actually wanted it to be kept at a manageable size. That's how I started my love affair with the trusty kumquat. At the time, I didn't know that Meiwa was not the common variety. I would read that Meiwa kumquats are sweeter, so I was very excited to try it. But of course, like any other plant lover, I had to have another, because plants are addicting. This time I found it at, you guessed it, Lowe's. On a trip to peruse the clearance section, as you do, this beautiful Nagami kumquat tree was cast off and marked down. So let me show you what my kumquat trees look like today. On the left is the Nagami, and on the right is the Meiwa. And in the middle is a Botanical, I believe. Being container plants is one of the best parts about growing kumquats. They're quite happy in a container, and will still be able to produce fruit, though I don't recommend keeping them as house plants. They really need fresh air and hours of direct sunlight to flower and fruit. You could, however, accomplish this on a balcony. And unlike many other fruiting trees, 
This tree is an evergreen, so it looks great year round. There are several kumquat varieties, but the three that are cultivated the most are Nagami, Mewa, and Marumi. Nagami is the most cultivated in the United States, so if you've had a kumquat, especially from a grocery store, it's most likely going to be Nagami. It has a very sour pulp and a sweet skin, and the mixture of the two flavors is great as one balances the other. If you're not a sour person like me, uh, the taste can be a little overwhelming, but overall, it's a very refreshing fruit. Mewa kumquats are more spherical in shape and look like a miniature orange. They have a sweeter pulp and a sweet skin. So to me, they taste like a very sweet orange and very different from Nagami. But beware, Mewa have a lot of seeds. So unless you want to power through and eat a bunch of kumquat seeds, you know, no judgment, you'll likely be spitting out a lot of seeds. But don't let that discourage you, the flavor is definitely worth it. In fact, Mewa have been described as a natural hybrid between Nagami and the third variety called Marumi. I've never grown the Marumi variety, but it's supposed to have round fruit with a thinner rind and being somewhat sweeter than Nagami. The trees for this variety also have smaller leaves. Marumi are more common than Mewa too, which is great because I'm on the search for this one. There are a few more varieties out there, but these are the big three that you'll likely encounter. When the fruit is ready to be picked in the winter, you don't have to pick it all at once because it'll be ripening at different times. I'll often be cleaning up the garden and just snag a couple kumquats, you know, as a snack. Some of the kumquats will be ready to pick early in November, while others need a few more weeks to finish ripening. You know, it kind of allows you to try different things with the fruit. So what can you do with these, you know, amazing little fruits? Well, there's plenty of uses for kumquats. You can candy them, pickle them, you can create a sauce with them, or you can make a marmalade. And I started making these little care bags for my neighbors. So when in doubt, give them to your neighbors too. One of my neighbors even used the kumquats I gave her to make mixed drinks. So that's another option. And if you're a florist or you like making arrangements, you can also use full branches in your flower arrangements. I haven't done this myself and I couldn't bear to cut off a whole branch, but it does sound like a fun idea. Another neighbor shared with me some kumquat marmalade that he made and it was amazing. I was inspired to do the same, but let's just be honest, mine did not taste nearly as good. Probably having to do with uh, kind of burning it a little bit. Anyway, you can also just snack on them as I do, or slice them up and throw them in a salad. Basically, have some fun with them because they're a unique fruit and you really don't run into them that often. First of all, you should know the kumquat tree can withstand much colder temperatures than other citrus trees. I leave these two trees outside during winter, only bringing them in if the temperature drops below 25 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And if you live in a hot climate, you will also be comforted to know that they can withstand hot temperatures as well. Just make sure that they have enough water. And in terms of pruning, you know, I haven't had to do any of that at all. Being small and evergreen, they're just very clean, tidy plants. The trees usually flower for me in late spring and early summer. The scent is similar to jasmine, perhaps a little less intense. To me, it kind of smells like a perfume that is both fresh and a little fruity. Perhaps, you know, kind of like me. This leads me to the next important part. If your tree isn't flowering when it should or producing fruit, you will need to incorporate fresh compost, slow release fertilizers, and liquid feedings. It's a good reminder that all these trees have access to is the soil inside the container. That's all they're ever going to get. So feeding is essential. I've noticed that by the end of the growing season, when the kumquats are just about ready to pick, um, it looks kind of like the chlorosis gets the worst around then. And I think they're just kind of tired, <laughs> exhausted from the growing season. So that tells you that the plant has used up a lot of its nutrients that now need to be replenished. Okay, I lied. Sometimes you do have to do 
just a little bit of pruning. So once you've gone through the season and you're beginning anew in the spring, you'll want to give them some fresh compost and slow release citrus fertilizer to start the tree off on a good foot. Root. To do so, I remove the mulch to get access to the soil. Just be careful with the delicate feeder roots. Oh yeah, don't be surprised if the fertilizer smells awful. Read the packet for the exact measurements for the size of your container. I gently massage the granules into the soil, being very careful not to break any of those feeder roots. As you water your container plants, it's always a good reminder that you're actually losing a tiny bit of soil and leaching out nutrients through the drainage hole. So this is a perfect time to fix that. I like to add several scoops of compost to bring the soil line back to where it was. Try to break up any large chunks that you find in the compost. And then you can replace the mulch on top. The soil line is a little high, but as you water, it will condense. And nothing different with my other kumquat, just rinse and repeat. When you buy a granular fertilizer designed for citrus, the manufacturer usually adds something like sulfur to lower the pH of the soil. If you don't have access to a citrus fertilizer, a general purpose fertilizer is certainly better than nothing. Now, the time for the easiest part, which is giving it a good drink. The fertilizer is activated with heat and water. Remember that chlorosis? Only a few weeks later, the new growth is emerging and the older leaves have taken a much more healthy color. Now my trees are ready for the season and, with any luck, we'll have a bountiful harvest full of this brilliantly colored fruit. So tell me your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to know, do you like kumquats? Do you hate them? And do you grow any of the kumquat trees that I talked about today? 
And if you can't have enough, you can also find my botanical adventures on my Instagram, at botanical. So give it a follow. Until next time, keep on growing.